How's it going? I'm outside Get Geiger, apparently. That's how you say it. German or Deutsch? Get Geiger. No, no, I'm afraid I... Nein. Right here it's called Pefken. 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 So is, is Get, get Pefken? Pefken is the name. Pefken. Ah, Pefken. But the first bit is Pefken. Deb, Deb, Pefken? Gefrieder Pefken. It's like Brazos. Yep. Deb. Brazos Pefken. Brazos Pefken. Oh, yeah. Brazos I got a couple of brothers myself. Brothers Thank you very much. Yeah. I don't speak German. Shit. I'm here to explore the beer that is called Kolsch. Hi, this is Kolsch. German beer. You like? I brought a beer expert with me, all the way from uh, London, England. You come from London, Mr. Collins. Hey guys, Nick here, the Hackney Hot Hunter. Um, as Alex says, the wandering Englishman, we've uh, we've come over to uh, Köln to explore some of the Kolsch breweries. What kind of beer? We went to uh, Brauwe uh, Fru last night, which was a nice start. It's the good German beer, and not these uh, pee pee water you're drinking back home. Am I right? Uh, we're coming to one of the uh, six original and remaining Kolsch breweries, Hafgagen. We'll take you through the style of Kolsch and, and explore this wonderful brewery and have you learn some of its history. Now we'll do it. We'll drink cheap beer. Fantastic. We've also got Ray with us, so we're going to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Ridge Racer. Raps are starting. Leave rappers vanquished like an Aston Martin. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> so these are like a 10 litre keg which you can buy for your table, you can share it between friends. It's generally the unfiltered version of the beer. Unfiltered. We'll see if we get a table and then we're in, we're in the people's way, you see. It's okay. That's good. <laughs> so this is a typical beer hall. A lot of beer halls in uh, Cologne look like this. We had the advantage of getting a little bit of a heads up on these places. We went to one last night and probably had one too many, but we're ready to go again. It's the middle of the day. We're gonna get little beers like this. The basic measurements of 0 0.2 per litre, so 200 milliliters. The theory is the beers just keep coming around as soon as you finish one. That way the beer doesn't get too hot. Why don't you have a beer? Three beers. Frost! Frost! <laughs> So what happens here, you will mark on the table how many beers we've had. See the pencils all, marks all over here? One, two, three. If you've had a good day, this will be covered in pencil marks, and then you go up and you pay. The negative of this sometimes is when he comes around with the beers, he won't have enough for everyone. There we go. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And so I drive. Plus! Plus! So we've had our fill at this place. When you finish your beer, put the mat on it, and then you take this off to the lady over there to pay the bill. In theory, that's what we're going to do. No, it's no card. No card? No. We, we can't pay with cards. We can only pay with cash. Cash only. Cash. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we have to pay for uh, like nine beers. As you can see, we've had three rounds. Um, they've kindly tallied it up on the uh, on the beer map for us. And we've just discovered that we can't pay by a card. That's okay, because Ray's got loads of cash. <laughs> For charity, we take special needs out with us. <laughs> <laughs> you can donate to our special needs cause. Ray. Ray. Because he lives in a crate. <laughs> He's very special. So having had three of those, which is effectively just more than a pint, we're going to go to the next venue. Now normally you would stay in these places for a long period of time, but because we want to try 
five or six of these breweries, we're going to try as many as possible. And that's why we're only going to stick to three 200 milliliter glasses per, per venue. They're very clean beers, but they're certainly not as interesting as a sort of hazy double IPA. Well, there's no mistake in this German beer. So the next venue is a little bit of a walk, but because it's such a beautiful day, about 24, 25 degrees, it's an opportunity for the Hackney Hop Hunter, that's at Hackney Hop Hunter on Instagram, to tell us a little bit about his expertise. So there's a professional film crew over here, filming us, you see. Gentlemen, will you be filming in Germany? Thank you, gentlemen. We're going to continue this way. Nikki C, take it away. Right, so um, as the wandering Englishman has said, here we are in Köln, um, specifically to try the beer style Kolsch. Kolsch, literal translation, means of Köln. It's also what somebody from Köln is referred to. <coughs> they are a Kolsch. So the beer style of Köln from Köln. Um, so you might be asking, well, what then is a Kolsch? So a Kolsch, if you look at it, you might be like, well, I'm pretty sure that is a lager. Oh, some new lager. Well, you'd be incorrect. Um, so a Kolsch is fermented with an ale yeast, a top fermenting ale yeast in warm conditions. But where it kind of takes its similarities to a lager is it is cold stored, so cold conditioned. In Germany, the word lager means to store. Lager beer? It's an ale, but manufactured similar to a process used to create a lager. Find a lager, please, Mary. And so if you were to drink it, you might be like, oh, that's quite clean. It doesn't have many kind of yeast characteristics or esters, which basically is a, a fruity flavor or aroma. But it'll have more than your average yard lager because it is using an ale yeast which will produce that for you. But it won't have lots of it because of the cold conditioning, which essentially makes it behave more akin to a lager. The lager is rather good. So you'll have a light fruity ester at some point, maybe like a green apple or, or a pear. Some people might say citrus. You know, I'm, I'm one of them citrus colors, you know what I'm saying? Beer tasting is subjective, so don't let anybody tell you what it should taste or smell like. It's up to you. You can ask the expert, Ray Ridge, it should taste like beer. <laughs> At Crate 08, brings the hate. You better stand clear, taking over the streets of Anglia. More hungry than Gandhi, a champion man here, angrier. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the style of Kolsch, well, how did it come about? Back in the day, as the city of uh, Köln and the people of Cologne were still making uh, beers with lager yeasts in Bavaria, but elsewhere, elsewhere in Germany and, and Europe, bottom fermenting, cold fermenting lager yeast beers were, were gaining popularity. And in Köln, they actually said, do you know what? We're going to try and protect this. We don't want any of those bottom fermented, cold fermented lagering beers happening here. We ain't London Puffs. We don't drink lager. So on two occasions, they made the brewers of Köln actually sign agreements that said, oh no, absolutely, we definitely won't use it, won't use any of those naughty cold conditioning yeasts, not us. So they, yeah, they still used the top fermenting, warm fermenting ale yeasts, but they decided to condition them cold. So they used an ale yeast, but in the production method of uh, of producing a lager and and that is where the beer style Kolsch came from and you know many many years later in 1986 the Kolsch convention uh, happened whereby the 24 Kolsch producing brewers came together and said you know essentially we're going to form a pact and we're going to continue to agree to produce coal and uh, Kolsch under the traditional method and fast forward another 11 years and uh, the EU stepped in, much like Cornish pasties or champagne, gave them a geographic protection on the beer style of Kolsch. We just made a deal that'll keep the empire out of here forever. Within the EU, and you know, fair enough, probably globally, if you're actually doing what you should, <coughs> Kolsch can only be produced in the city of Köln. You know, if a uh, brewer outside of that were to create a, a Kolsch beer, which of course they can, it's easy enough to do, they would, should say, a Kolsch style beer, or perhaps a Kolsch inspired beer. You want some beer? As we're going to take you on this journey today, you'll see that it's not just the beer that's interesting, it's really the, 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 the service um, techniques. You want another beer? 
the culture around drinking it in the brow houses. In the evenings you're a free man, you go after the beer hall. You know, where you drink it in the small 200ml rod shaped glasses, where they just keep bringing them until, until essentially you stop. So it's just a, a really easy drinking, quaffable, smashable beer that you drink cold in quantity with friends and uh, just keep enjoying it. Uh, and it can just sneak up on you and uh, probably something's going to sneak up on us. I'm switching to beer, okay? That's, that sounds fantastic. So basically we're on a, a cultural and a history, historic lesson with the ability to have a drink. <laughs> that, and what better way to learn than, uh, than beer in hand? Yeah, so we're going to hit you know, as many as we can of the uh, Kolsch producers. There's uh, six main producers now, far cry from the 24 at the time of the Kolsch convention. But those six producers haven't necessarily... Um, well, we're just going to have a quick aside. Look, you can see how much Kolsch means to the city of Köln. Like, everywhere there are just... You know, they're, they're all about their local beer style. Every restaurant, you know, pub, etc., will be aligned to, to one of these Kolsch producers and, and serve beer in, this, in the technique that we've explained. You know, they come in 200 mils or 400 mils. Let's cross here, let's cross here. We've got to cross over here. Let's cross over here. We could cross here. We're not really supposed to be crossing like that. In Germany, I think you get done for jaywalking, but we're okay, we're okay. No, no one was harmed in the making of this footage. And, and luckily it's all on film, so if the police wish to prosecute us. Oh, they've got, they've got so much film of me breaking <laughs> the law in different countries. Here we go. Because Ray's a policeman, we lost him. Barry's think they're manly, a foot at queer Drinking a can beer in cars that look weaker than sangria Having crossed that dangerous road in the intersection, Ray's now with us. You were going to tell me a little bit about the history. What's your story on imported German beer? Yeah, so we, we were talking a bit about, thought it might be interesting to talk about a bit like the dates of the style evolution. Uh, and earlier I mentioned, you know, essentially it's a style that's very reminiscent of a lager, you know, it's bright, it's uh, transparent, it, it's clear, it's bubbly. You're like, oh, is, is it any relation to the German pills? A large one, like the pills, well, well, mainly no and some yes. Uh, so, you know, the, the whole pills style originated out of, it was a copy from uh, a beer made in Bohemia in the Czech Republic. That was uh, started in the town of Pilsen in the 1840s, actually by a German brewer. But aside, the Kolsch style started prior to that, uh, late 1600s in the 17th century, when essentially these cold conditioning, bottom fermenting lager yeasts were gaining in popularity. You know, a lot of things aligned at that point to, for the rise of this style of beer in Bavaria. And that later was the inspiration for the Czechs to try and brew their own lagered beer with bringing in this German brewer. I have respect for beer. So Kolsch itself was in rise to the, the lagering process, but started many years before uh, a German pills. That is a beer. We'll sit down later and we can talk through the differences between a German pills and a Kolsch for those that are interested. It's going to be one of those long videos, guys. It's going to be a very long video, but we're excited. Look at, as, we're, as we're here, we're walking through this beautiful Cologne Square. We can appreciate one of the many magnificent churches that can be found in Cologne. Cologne isn't all about the big cathedral, disastrous New Year's Eves and debauchery. Oh, wicked. So we are currently en route. If we can show up here, uh, or just keep going forward, Mr. Wandering Englishman. What's this is the brewery that we're going to be heading towards. You can see that we're obviously getting closer to their neighbourhood because the beer, you know, the cafes are starting to switch to this brand, the Riesendorf Brow House. Riesendorf. Is it anything to do with uh, pirates? Nothing that I know of. This so is... you can see, you know, even in the glass windows, we're we're, we're clearly moving into an area where the influence of this particular brewery is going to start to exert itself and most of the cafes, bars, restaurants, or the majority of, it's going to be easier for them to source the Kolsch from the, the closest brewery. And Riesendorf are one of the, uh, essentially what's called the big three that really have since the last 50 years or so bought up other uh, competing local Kolsch breweries and they operate them still individually but they're one of the big three that owns the rest 
and uh, yeah, we're off to go to their own brewery and check it out. Good times. Excited, very excited. You're human, Charlie. Beer? With the miracle of time travel, we will be there any moment. At our second Kolsch brewery of the day. Ready to go, ready to have a drink. Beautiful, Beautiful weather. So we've opted to go outside because it's such a nice day and the majority of the brew houses will probably be inside but this one we're going to go outside as you can see beautiful surroundings, beautiful tables, it's very busy at night time but we're going to go outside and just soak in the, the nice weather. Prost! Prost! <laughs> No beer tour is complete without the, the obligatory curry vest. Dust is good. Dust is good. Mm. Mm. Ah, that was good sauce. What's that more? The, um, the curry vest sauce or the tomato is surprisingly. They're both really good. Mm. It's a shame that. It's a shame the curry roast sauce is so good because it's mm. <clears throat> it doesn't want you don't want to appreciate the, the mayonnaise. Mm. And one German uh, adventure would not be complete without a bit of uh, German schnitzel, German schnitzel Jäger. Well, extremely satisfied. Probably one of the best curry verse in all of this area. Better than a lot of Berlin curry verse, so make notes. They don't cut the sausage up, but you don't, it doesn't matter, it's so good, very tasty. And the schnitzel, how was it? Yeah, the schnitzel was excellent. We had both the peppercorn schnitzel and the mushroom schnitzel. The, the mushroom, which is Jäger, Jäger yeah. schnitzel. And it was magnificent, magnificent. So we're gonna go on to the next venue. Do you know where we're going? Um, can't the remember spot. the name, um, <laughs> but we're, I cannot pronounce it either. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go to another one of the uh, sort of big six remaining Kolsch breweries. Uh, those six essentially own and operate all of the remaining ones. I mean, they kept the original breweries, but um, you know, the ownership is different. Let's go. Let's enjoy this. The only uh, drawback about Cologne is the price of hotels. This is the Wazerton Hotel, and this is... £341 to stay at a night, which is about $420 a night at this hotel. But it, the advantage is you're, you're opposite a, a water park. So you can take in the, the delights of a water park and also take in Kolsch beer. But between you and me, it's always been my dream to work in a water park. Interestingly, Köln, the city of Cologne, if we're pronouncing it in English, was the far furthest reaching outpost of the Roman Empire. Uh, essentially, on the banks of the Rhine, Rhine, they set up a colony, which is the etymology of the word colon and colony. So yeah, it was the farthest reaching point of the Roman Empire and they set up a trading post, which they termed a colony. And here we are, many, many years later, the city is still prosperous and we're walking around it, drinking some beers, having a good time. There you go, and normally it's me with these history lessons, but thank God I've got Nikki C with me today. Thank you. Here we go, friendly to the Ukrainian cause. We must enter the Brauli Zermaltzemer. Maltzemer, I'm brutalizing that, I know. But we're gonna go inside. <laughs> So after a long walk where we've just walked down our food babies, too much to eat in the last place, we now find ourselves in this brew house. Very modern actually, look at the modern staircase. Very nicely done out. We've been put in the corner because we're only going to be drinking and they're going to be expecting an influx of people. But we're going to take in maybe two, three, 200 milliliters of this. Kolsch, Let's see where it takes us. Can I have a beer please, Dad? Prost! 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 It's not on, is it? 
Yeah. All right, on to the next place, next brew house. Let's go. So as we gravitate towards our next brew house, we have the beautiful statue of Frederick William III. There you see his name. Frederick William III, I think, born in the 18th century, died in the 19th century, early 19th century. And over here we have the amazing, amazing Cologne Cathedral. And this is one of the main squares in Cologne. Nice, beautiful square. Cologne isn't known for its beauty, but there are little points of beauty that can be found. There we go. Tourists getting their photos taken. Frederick William III. See, some people say Cologne is just a concrete jungle and it's not that beautiful. But look at this street. This is what much of Cologne would have looked like pre complete destruction before the Second World War. And now, this is our next Kolsch Brewery. We're going to enjoy this. I'll be honest, I'm getting a little bit drunk now, so who knows what's going to happen next. But it's by the river. We've got the river flowing through Cologne. And we're going to go to, not the Tutoria, we're going to go to this brewery, I think. So we find ourselves on the River Rhine, and this is going to be our next stop. We're going to be going to this brow house over here. But the River Rhine is the significant river that runs through Cologne. And if you are tempted to go to the neighboring town of Dusseldorf, or Dusseldorf as the, the Germans say, Meine Eltern kamen aus Dusseldorf. Ah. you can jump on this little boat, this barge, this ferry, and it will take you up the river and it will take you to Dusseldorf. But for the moment, we're going to go to the brow house, our brow house over here. To the Blau House, as we say. Yeah. Let's go. Sadly, before the uh, Second World War, much of Cologne used to look like this, but Churchill and uh, the Brits, we, we knocked it down. Mistakes were made. As the uh, weather changes, down okay. these beautiful alley alleyways in the center of the city, away from the river, to find our next Kolsch beer place. The beer museum is here. There's two beer museums in Cologne. This is the second one. The other one being on the, the west side of the city. This is kind of like towards the right of the center of the city. Well, maybe next time. Yeah. So according to our expert over here, despite the fact that this looks like a very old building, which it is, this isn't a Kolsch brewery. This is a Kolsch pub. So we're just going to avoid this for the meantime because... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's lovely. Um, but essentially, it'd be like going into a London pub and it having the word Stella hanging outside. This Gaffel Kolsch is just a brand, so it's like that is the brand we sell. Uh, again, lovely, brilliant river views, uh, but we're going to go and visit the Brow House, which essentially is the outlet of the brewery. Okay. Look at this. So we look up here, we've got these, and the Sal's Gas Passage, we've got these beautiful statues. It's, it is a remarkably beautiful city, and I was wrong with my perceptions in this place. Try to keep an open mind. The Kolsch Cologne Art Gallery, and here we are, the Sunna in Wolfish. Look at this, look at this, just the views. We've got the whale, we've got the Sunna on full fish. I'm going to go in here, take in this beautiful building. Let's go for it. Hi. Uh, it's why? Oh, we got Sunna Kosh. Sunna Kosh. Mm. You know what? That's the best one here. I was beginning to think all of these beers taste the same, but this one's. This one's a much lighter, cleaner, actually tastier beer. This is a Sunna, a Sunna Kolsch. Sadly, a very noisy location, but they basically put us upstairs. We're in a kids' party, there's a kids' party going on. But this is not a bad beer. What does the expert think? Um, oh, so I think it's uh, <laughs> fruity aftertaste. Ooh. <laughs> it tastes like Kolsch. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Should we uh, have a quick uh, intro on how to taste beer? Um, expert Ray M P three degrees. You basically mentioned Rich Mappa with that. Okay. Serious. So, um, quick beer tasting tutorial. Obviously, look at it. Assess the colour. 
see how transparent it might be. Have a look at the, the carbonation in the head. Which are then you want, swimming around in it. Then you want to uh, assess the aroma, um, and you know, one way to do that is obviously just a quick sniff. But you can do what's called a covered sniff, where you trap the aromas in, and then give it a much deeper uh, sniff, as it were. And then the last thing is uh, either like the flyby. Or some people in America like the Ferris wheel, where you're just getting some of the aroma, just like a touch. Now of who's taking a guess? <laughs> and then lastly, enjoy a nice good sip. You want to coat all of the mouth, and contrary to popular belief, the tongue map that Americans get taught in school is a complete lie. All parts of the tongue can taste all uh, of the different uh, tastes. It's not like, yeah, so they, you know, back in the day they were like, oh, this bit picks up bitterness, this bit picks up sourness, this bit picks up sweetness. Oh, it's a lie. Okay. Everything too. Any of the. Um, I know what word is, like receptors on your tongue can taste the same thing. any of the, you know, the, 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 the five like flavors. Well, there we go, your tongue is better than you thought it was going to be, ever. Your tongue. Savor your tongue. Well, that's the premature race. Always to the next pub, to the next brew house. Thank you very much. And it's raining outside. Well, the weather's turned dramatically, but that's all right. Here we find ourselves at one of the last Blau houses of our journey. This is Peter's Blau house. Let's go in and take this in. Frost. 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 So what's great about this whole place is we've been sidelined because it's so busy. The whole place, everyone's eating. We've eaten. We had the the carnivores and the schnitzel, and now we've been sidelined to see where all of the trays get taken out. And what is the tray called? You, you can remind me. Yeah. So the tray is called uh, crams, uh, which means wreath. Um, and also because it looks a bit like a wreath or a crown and they hold 11 to 12 um, of the glasses, the, the stanger. Um, yeah, and then you'll see the servers collect and distribute the beers in the, in the crans. Let's have a look at how they do this. They've got this, uh, these are the crans over here. Here we go. This is the crans. And then they fill them up over here. What are you doing? Put them out and then the server takes them out. This is and this is old school, this is real wood. So Coopers are actually making these tiny little kegs. They burst them in, you may have seen, you hopefully may have seen me capture it, but they basically put the taps into the kegs and they take it in and they go And that's, uh, how many liters? 10 liters. 10 liters in these kegs. So without fail, we've got ourselves 0.2 milliliters times three. Every single brow house we've gone to, obviously he's got an Instagram it. Obviously he's got to take a photo, famous one, obviously. But now putting a new barrel on, and let's see if he's gonna punch a hole in it. Maybe. Let's see if he punches a hole. There we go. Like us, a tourist. Like no, us. I'm not a tourist. I'm on the. Oh, oh, what's a what's a word in English for messer? Messer. Messer. Uh, I take a look yeah. in my yeah. my smartphone. 
Messe. Industrial Fair. Industrial Fair? Industrial Fair. Oh, yeah. Fair. For, 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 uh, for the conference. Yeah. The, the, digital, conference. the digital conference. Yeah, we have a great conference. On, um, digital yeah, the, 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 the told, Digital X. The told, um HR. Yeah. Personal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Europe. Ah. It's in, in Cologne. Okay. And so I'm uh, on the fair. Yeah. Then you, you have to make, here's my business card, here's my business card, and yeah. <laughs> I don't have a business card. Yeah, it's digital now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's you thought, while in Cologne, I must drink coal. I must come to a brow house and it's have good. some coal. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the best, it's the best, the best. Yeah. The best Kölsch yeah. is Pefken. You know Pefken? Yeah, Pefken, yes. Yes, we, we went earlier today uh, with the, the, the green uh, the green logo. It's, it's the best. We've, yeah. been, we've been to every Kölsch place in Cologne. Okay. So. Not every. every. A lot, a lot. No, Not no, every. No, we, we, How long you stay in, in, in Cologne? We, uh, yeah, we arrived okay. last night, we leave tomorrow. You leave tomorrow? Yeah. Oh. Let's yeah. get yeah, as much beer as we can in the, me in the short time we're here. So. The, the best location in Cologne is Max Starke. Max Starke. Max Starke. Max Starke. Starke. Okay. Close, close to here or far? It's a, it's a, I think 10 minutes with a, with, with, with a, with a e, uh, oh, with a scooter. With scooter. Yeah, yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. Max, Ga what Max Starke. That? What happens there? It's best food and the best beer. We might be hungry and again. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's priceless. Yeah. It's in the, so original Pathkin in, ah, in the brewery. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very good. It's very good. Yeah. I it, stayed at last night yeah. Uh, yeah. in <laughs> Max and Today, I'm, today we did. Today we've done five breweries. Yeah. Today, so far this is our fifth, but we continue. We continue going yeah. on. So we, every every yeah. brew house we had three of these. And, Go so, to go to Max Starke. Max Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for the recommendation. No. Well, that's been it. I'm leaving the brew house behind, the brow house, as they say. I'm going to go on to the next place. And the reality is, my battery is dying. I won't be able to film the rest of this simply because one, I'm getting too drunk, and two, I don't know what's going to happen next. And three, you need to visit Cologne for the fact that the brew house is worthy of a visit. So, if you've enjoyed this content, I'd like to hopefully you will see you in the next video. And this has been Cologne. I appreciate you watching. Like and share. Cross! Cross. Cross.